topic, offline. So I'd like all of you to please tell me more specifically what you would be interested in the interesting in the topic before I explain the topic, because I'm thinking some just showed up because you came to listen to Mohammed, right? Yeah. Yes, and maybe you say it, and thank you. Or maybe you came with a very super specific question of something you would like to know more. So please, very quickly, Mohammed. Yeah. yeah, okay, you give your first name because it's an opportunity and at the same time, if you have something specific you want to hear about, what is it? I'm actually interested in these offline tools because there are so many internet problems, so we are working offline right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I said I'm so interested in these offline tools because if we are experiencing internet problems like we did, um, things will be much easier, Yanni. We will not have any problems. So, yeah, I think that that will be so beneficial to us. Okay. And uh, my Akbar Ali. Okay, my question is actually, or my expectation is, uh, there are a lot of people in India that don't have devices. So, how can they participate okay. offline? Okay. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Diane. Hi, Florence. <laughs> so this is about what I expect from this session, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I want to learn more about Kiwix. Uh, actually, for me, sometimes I have the internet, and then I'm downloading to the something. I'm reading and then I'm solving the, the, some, the, something wrong and then I have to uh, check and the change of the when we are going to the online. Uh, I have to, uh, for example, uh, stick to the there, there is a something wrong and after that when we online we can change this. Okay. Uh, Zafar from Turkey. Okay, we sometimes we went to Tanzania. Uh, we know that it's very expensive to connect to internet, and we, I want to know what happened with this uh, uh, trick. Do you have? Yes, of course. Yes. Do you want to say something? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. 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 My name is Erin. Uh, no, I, I as my colleague. Uh, for me, I think that uh, my name is Musab. First, I'm from Jordan. Um, I get to know about this. I don't want to do much specific, but I work with internet in a box for a medical content. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, as a QX ambassador. Um, the thing is that I I feel like when you're in an area, for example, classroom, there's a huge number of students, like 45, for example, in some areas in my country. Um, internet will be like in heavy load if there is the educational content when on one place that everyone can reach it that's very very good thing and also if you can edit offline because like electricity problems you know not always about the internet sometimes you, you lose the electricity you have like uh, yeah some problem so uh, it like goes to the offline and then when when it's connected it will reflect the changes this is uh, this is a very good thing about the offline tools yeah Malaysia is the group. Yeah, so I was thinking of how to continue editing Wikipedia with or without internet. Of course, during during without internet, we we edit, we save it first in a in a temporary cloud or I mean uh, I mean local local storage, and then once the internet is back, it will synchronize back to to the internet on what is the latest updated, or it will inform us what are the, the changes. So are the, are you okay with these changes, or or um, ask for our um, approval for these changes, then only we continue back again. Okay, that's, that's a, a need that we can identify and no, and maybe no nope either. Okay. So I'd like a volunteer to just, it's the wrong side, I'd like a volunteer to tell me how do you define... How do you define offline? I need a volunteer to just pick up so that it's clear for everyone what we mean by offline. Yeah, offline means that we don't use any internet or any form of connection, Yani. We just have your laptop or your device and you're not connected to anything offline. Okay. So I'd like to um, give a, well, first maybe if I can succeed to do that, I would like to show you uh, just a little intro about, I'm not sure I'm going to succeed with the videos. 
ya. Okay. Again. Yeah, yeah, but it's subtitled. That's the better than nothing. Yeah, but I can't remember where. Any chance that we have a sound or not at all? I don't think so. So maybe it will not be very helpful. Yeah, okay. going to stop here because it's complicated without the sound at all. But let me explain to you very briefly what this movie was about. This is a movie that was shot in uh, 2011 by somebody called Victor Griegas. And at that time he heard about a school in South Africa in Cape Town. And why do I mention it? It's because I am actually today with two hats. So one hat is that I actually co-founded an association in Wikin Africa, which is located in Cape Town. So I know these kids. And when, uh, amongst the work we, we did in education was actually working with those kids. And they have actually access through their cell phones. So they have devices to do that. But their main problem is the cost of data. And that was their request at that time. It was when the Wikimedia Foundation tried to set up this partnership called Wikipedia Zero. So I don't know to which point, yes, you were part of it. He is the guy. So I just is the guy who joined Wikipedia thanks to Wikipedia Zero or through Wikipedia Zero. So the very general idea was that the customers, the client of a of a phone company who had already an account, could actually access Wikipedia without it being incurred on their data cost. But one of the problem of this uh, of this program is that you had to be a customer of of the pro of the, of the company before having that. So that meant that those who were net customers couldn't have that. And unfortunately, some companies also didn't really push and advertise the fact that they would have that. But that was the the first time we really really talked about this, uh, and that's why Grigas went there because the company offering Wikipedia Zero did not operate in South Africa. So these kids heard about the program in other places and they made an official request, a letter. And um, this is where the, the movie was shot. After this, what I'd like to summarize, what we mean Wikipedia definition. I thought it important because the first time I started talking about Wiki offline, two years ago, everyone was thinking COVID. So they were thinking online is when I'm actually online, offline is more or less face-to-face -face meeting. So this is not it. That's when the technology is missing. And when we talk about technology, it's not only a question of internet. Let me give you a few examples. Uh, number one, some countries actually do have internet, but they are regularly missing electricity. So maybe you didn't hear about that, but actually Cape Town, which is a big city, is actually currently missing electricity about 12 hours per day. 12 hours per day because the companies and the government apparently were not, well, <laughs> sufficiently planning so that people would have electricity. So they have load shedding all the time, which is planned and sometimes unplanned. So even though the, the people there are pretty much like you are, they f find themselves half of the time during the day work without internet because they have no electricity. Another reason why people might be missing that is the lack of devices, either cell phones or laptops. Right? But there's also the question of data. Uh, some people actually do have devices, they do have in access to internet, but it costs too much. And I have a few figures to share with you because I think it's interesting. So this is the population coverage, these figures is, are either from 2019 or 2020. And this is the coverage by type of mobile network. At the top is 4G, the big bar in, in the dark blue, 
and the 3G is in, in light blue. And if you compare it to Africa, you see already 4G is only 44%. That's, so there's sometimes, and I could talk about Asia, some Asian country are also having some issues. So there's first the internet access, but there's also uh, the difference between rural and urban areas. So typically if you look at the word, rural is connected by 70%, uh, urban, rural, 7, 37%. So big difference. And uh, I have this slide that I collected about affordability of ICT rates. So if you look at the world, uh, on average, the cost of your mobile data is about 4.3% four, uh, 4 of your income. Uh, in Europe, we are super, super blessed. Look, this is the average world. Our cost on average is only 0.8% of our income. That's peanuts. We can't afford paying that. If you compare in Africa, the amount of, compared to the average income of a person is absolutely crazy. So people who are working more or less in our sector are fine, but most people actually cannot access, not because they like device, not because they like internet or electricity, but because they cannot not afford it, right? Do you have a comment about this? Some memories of what you have been doing in the past? Yes. yes. For example, when I joined like Wikipedia, I didn't know about the even I didn't know about Wikipedia Zero. I had a daily, uh, a monthly um, uh, like quota of 500 uh, bytes, just uh, you know half a gig, uh, and it usually like um, um, uh, goes away in in like 10 days if you go open YouTube or something, or, or, or even update your mobile apps. Uh, so after that, I like suddenly found that when I open Wikipedia uh, during my medical study, I, I can access. And then I like start, Wikipedia was the first and always uh, site that I served. And then I joined in 2013 and the good about this story is now, it's 10 years, I'm in 10 years in Wikipedia. I have uh, 180,000 contributions. I'm ranked fifth at my local wiki, uh, Arabic Wikipedia, and also the highest Jordanian in terms of number of uh, contributions. So uh, the thing is, it, it is very important. I am so sad that Wikipedia Zero now no longer exists, but I just want to say that we have like, I'm not uh, saying that we're proud of about myself or to promote myself, but I'm just saying that you can have a great Wikipedia from just simple program like this. There is no, there's too much qualified, like let's say, uh, people, but they don't have uh, internet. If you if you go to the, this diagram, it says that Arab states needs like 4.1 percent of their income to get uh, high quality internet. That's what we face. Like for example, uh, if like as a, as a married guy, when I pay for myself and my wife, for example, when then this will be doubled. So this is uh, what's about internet. And also there is something to address that. Uh, Telecom, uh, telecom com, like companies, they they lower the the quality of the 3G to push you to to have a 4G, which is more expensive. Nice. This is another thing to to mention. Thank you. That's a good one as well to mention. I agree. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and we are not even talking of 5G here, right? So yeah, one of the good thing as well is that actually Wikipedia is not very. Uh, uh, heavy in terms of data, and we should keep it this way, by the way. Anyway, um, I would like to suggest a little bit of thinking and production from you guys. Uh, when I've been thinking about offline, I generally consider that there are four elements, four directions of thoughts. The first one is the tech. What can we do from a tech perspective to improve the situation? To We, we cannot solve entirely by ourselves this situation of a, of a uh, data of access or, or devices, but what can be done there? Second, the people involved, uh, who can help within us or within other organizations, such as in the past, the organization working in the in those tech company to give access. But also think about the content. Uh, this is a topic I, which is very dear to my heart, because when we when we want to actually address the fact that some people might not easily access some of our content. Uh, to pick up an example, Wikipedia, if you provide it as text, is very light in terms of data. If you provide it with high quality images, then it's a different story. So that's something to consider. But also uh, to give an example on something I've been working on and I invite you to look at, for example, um, which is there. 
uh, when I wanted to create some content for kids in Africa to understand better copyright, I looked at what was available online and I found lots of videos produced by French people, French from France, and from Canadian French people. So it was referring all the time to French and Canadian people and French and Canadian laws. And it was also referring all the time to Instagram and YouTube and whatever. Bring that to a village in the middle of nowhere, the kids will just look at that and think, so what is in there for me? So there's the question of content. And the fourth one, there's what about the initiative that currently exists that can actually help? So I invite you to take a couple of minutes before I give you the floor. Just think a couple of minutes. What can you, by yourself, with your knowledge, where can you, what can you put in the tech, in the people, in the content and the initiative? I stay silent for one minute so that you think. proposition guys what can we list in the tech part we already mentioned wikipedia zero which is a sort of a tech solution you already mentioned wikiwix what's you mentioned kiwix as well you mentioned uh the internet in the box internet in the box what else is there ideas anyone has another idea for the tech box Only key weeks. Hmm? Hmm? So what is in the content box? Uh, we, we created offline uh, application for medical articles on Wikipedia. We do it, I'm part of a board member of Wikimedia Medicine. We did that uh, uh, in collaboration with Dr. James Hillman, I, if you know him. Uh, this is just you download it for one time and then you can serve medical content in different languages. There, there's Arabic version, there's English version. Uh, the just thing I want to add to the content, not as, uh, not as uh, before the, this question, there is some talk topics that are censored or like for example there's some Wikipedia has been banned in, in in some governments if we have offline version of this with our QX, with our internet on the books whatever we can like um, uh, bridge the, the censorship or the banning of the wiki it's actually a very good point because I forgot to mention it there are two, two well two main other reasons why people might not have access it's absolutely not tech it's not data it's not cost it's one censorship so one censorship and the second is typically people who are partly uh, ripped of their freedom such as prisoners prisoners don't have internet access no most of the time yes. I, uh, I was thinking about the content uh, might be any database which is offline yeah dictionaries. yes dictionaries. Any some of them some of the dictionaries yeah and uh, but what about the initiative which one do you know but Kiwix, yeah, it's, I put it in the tech part. No, but initiative in education. Initiative in education. So there is the OLPC initiative. I, OLPC, one laptop per child. Yeah, but I think its outcomes were not. Yes, they gave, um, they gave laptops to some child and these laptops have Kiwix inside so that they can smurf uh, the encyclopedia without, um, without internet. But I think its outcomes weren't that good. I mean, I read uh, a war research about it and the outcomes weren't yani, that positive. So, yeah. yani, they didn't recommend do it again. Uh, 
I think if I can recall in the early 2000s before Wikipedia uh, became popular, we used to, before Wikipedia, we used to have Microsoft Encarta and that is completely offline. We just bought the DVD and then download it and it's not that big actually, two, three gigabyte, less than 10 gigabyte and then basically we, we can search 90% of the world knowledge already. Yeah. But because of uh, Wikipedia, then uh, Microsoft Encarta is slightly uh, dying out. So at, at, at least in, in some portion of Wikipedia, they should have some kind of like the most, um, let's say like the, the most important information in which it has to be documented offline as if like Microsoft and, and Carta, sort of like that kind of like uh, approach. So I'm giving you some visual and I don't know exactly how much time I have uh, left. Can you tell me? Are we still? You don't know because you were not listening. Okay, so let me give you some, oh, sorry, it's here. Uh, some examples. So you already in the tech, we mentioned, so as a reminder, this was the one laptop per child initiative with laptop being distributed to kids. There's the Kiwix, I will talk to more, uh, about it more. There's the Wikifundi, which I wanted to mention, and I have some um, documents here, and I can show you how it works very briefly afterwards. But they're not, Way more than that. And in particular, one of the things, uh, so the difference between the two Kiwiks is creating an archive of things and providing it for offline use. But it's only about reading. Uh, uh, Wikifundi is essentially a system for people to write offline and then it can be published online. So one is about reading, the other one is about editing. The difference is that we don't have a system, and it's on purpose right now, that allows to edit offline and synchronize magically online. We wish. We had a dream at some point. We wanted to do it from, uh, from the, the satellite you know, over there. I wanted to do it from you know, far away in Uganda, and some other people wanted to do it from space. But synchronization, if the article was already edited, uh, in the between by other people, it, it could create lots of social problem. And it also needed servers to actually do the in-between, uh, between the moment that you did the edit and save it locally, before it was uploaded online. So there were lots of discussion around this topic when we were uh, Wikimania in Canada. So that was uh, already five years ago, I think. And then nobody is talking about it anymore. So I'm just, I'm sorry about that. But uh, maybe there might be other initiative around. So if you hear about them, just mention it. I will come back to the Wikimed afterwards. So about the people, I mentioned the offline, so the, that's the Wikimedian of the offline <laughs> wikis user group. The name is complicated. So I mentioned it because there is a user group of people interested on the matter. If you want to, if you're interested, that's an affiliate. You can check it on Meta and join it. But it's still a very good, small group. Uh, and not so many people on it really being involved in activities, but still mentioning it for exchanges. Uh, content, we actually quite, have quite a lot of things, thanks to Kiwix, but not only. So we mentioned earlier on, on some uh, dictionary and others, there's the Khan Academy, lots of stuff, uh, the Gutenberg Encyclopedia, all the content that has been developed through the Wikimed project, so med uh, uh, medical content. Uh, we, Wikidia, which was mentioned earlier this afternoon, which is an encyclopedia de dedicated to kids on the same principle than Wikipedia, is also available online. There's Colibri. I don't know if anyone's know Colibri. Okay, that's more. And there's the Kiwix library, which contains something like 7,000 resources now. So that doesn't mean it's lacking resources, but we have lots of stuff in that area. And the last one for the, for the initiative, there's actually several initiatives that are, are ongoing. And today I'm representing one and Ruby, who was supposed to be a speaker, was representing the second one. So I can only mention the two. Kiwix for School is a program that is relying on Kiwix, uh, operating in countries such as Ghana. They are ambassadors of the Kiwix system. They go to school, they try to install Kiwix on servers that operate in schools and they have some training session and edit, edit uh, well, contributing uh, um, activities. Uh, I run the Wiki Challenge Ecole d'Afrique. That's a program I've been running for 
six years now in 10 countries in French-speaking Africa. And I do it thanks to the participation of uh, to La Fondation Orange, Orange Foundation, who is actually providing uh, servers and tablets to kids in a, in a program of schools. So they provide the tech, they provide the local facilitators, and for me, I organize a training system and a contribution on Wikidia, on the small encyclopedia, because these kids are between 9 to 12. As far as I know, those are the main uh, current existing um, initiative in the, in, the, in, the, in the ecosystem. So Kiwix Ambassadors and uh, Ruby's program and my program in French. I don't know if there are others than that. If you know some more, do you feel that, do you, are you thinking of other things that we could add there? No? Nope. I don't think there's something more. I don't think there's something more. <laughs> we, we are, it seems that we're not very numerous. They are, they are all under the same concept of keywords. Yeah. yeah. Even if I have new, new initiatives or mm. things or new tech solutions, they will mm. all to yeah I was saying that all the solutions that I'm thinking about are having the same concept of Kiwix actually which is an offline encyclopedia that anyone can smurf without the need of um, uh, connecting to internet and all these things so but I will brainstorm with myself and I will come up with new solutions inshallah if you have some new ideas I'm changing it yes walking around <laughs> good <laughs> this is the good steps uh, yeah of course i heard the uh, the half hour before the tikipedia maybe content could be tikipedia uh, content wise yeah yeah they could so maybe they are sorry maybe oof, maybe maybe they are doing some weird noises i'm not a fan i'm going to steal it the okay. other <laughs> Uh, better, I think. Uh, the, yeah, I'm going to show you the. Well, this is dangerous, you know that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me show you a bunch of things. First, Kiwix. So I'd like just to not to introduce all of it because it will be too long, but to point out to a couple of things. First, there are some links in my presentation. I will put all of them on the meta page, so you can check them afterwards. So the very basic idea of Kiwix, now organized as an association, which is in Switzerland, uh, is that they, they propose a system. Uh, they actually retrieve content from various sources. Not all of them are actually under a free license. Some of them are NC or ND. So it's lots of resources. They collect them and they developed a system to store them. And then they provide an archive, and you can collect the archive and set it up in different contexts. And the, they essentially have four contexts that you can use. The first context is using it on small servers like those ones, what we call Raspberry Pi. So I don't know if all of you are favor. Do you know you don't? This is a server. The difference is that it's, this one is without keyboard, without screen. Uh, without even an antenna to <laughs> catch things better. Uh, this, the, the operating system and the content is put on a little card, like a photographic card. Uh, this one must be, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 32 gigabytes, but it can be small, uh, bigger. We plug it in the electricity, which, has, which can also work on a battery, for example. And then when it's launched, it creates a, a Wi-Fi network. And if you check on your phone at the moment, you will find it because it's a Wikifundi. The, the name of the network is Wikifundi. Um, and you can, instead of being connected to the internet, you connect yourself to this little Wi-Fi, which is usually the, the size of this room, more or less, a classroom. It will cover a dozen of, of users at the same time. So this can be used in classroom context. And it can also be very easily put in your pocket so uh, the reason why we initially developed the system ourselves was because we had groups who wanted to run editatons and everything was prepared. The, 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 the people invited were here, they had the content, they had the will, and at the last moment, no electricity, no internet, what do we do? So they had a backup system. And on the SD card, we can put anything we want. 
including Kiwix content. And I'll show you why, uh, how exactly after. So that's the first setup where you can put resources and display a Wi-Fi. Second situation, you do it on the server, a one of the big ones. And typically this is an interesting situation for university, for schools, for a bigger, bigger environment. So this has been typically deployed in schools and universities. And I, as far as I know, uh, Ruby's uh, project is using a server. It's more expensive, it's more complicated to run, but it allows more use, it's stronger. There is a third situation where you bundle the Kiwix system in specific application, and that's the case of Wikimed, right? Yes. yes. So they, they can do a system where you have your own application with your own content and your own setup in an application. And the fourth one is to do it on your desktop. So you can run it by yourself. You can download and have your own stuff on your server. So if you're regularly offline, then you can do it. Okay, so those are the main four ones. And um, the key elements here, we have, uh, I have a slide to give you some example of the content. Uh, this is about 7,000 packages of, of resources available in more than 100 languages. Now let's face it, you will find way more content in English than in Turkish maybe. Though I haven't checked for Turkish. So you might, of course, typically find Wikipedia offline, any of our projects online, not Wikidata, of course. No, uh, well, I don't think Commons is in here, but for Wikipedia you have different versions with high quality picture, low quality picture, without picture to try to address everyone's need. You will find other uh, education resources such as Khan Academy, some YouTube and TED, TED Talks, lots of stuff. So you can actually take up some resources which are packaged for your own need or you can create your own package. And I have a, sh a very short video that I can show you uh, exactly to show you how it is working. This is on a, the system has been developed through uh, what we call a I love the uh, promotion all the time, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find my, here, yeah. there. Okay, so, typically online, there's a something called the card shop hotspot Kiwix. I'm an ambassador, so I have an account to this place. Sorry, it's only in French for me, I have no idea why. So I will look at my configuration, I can decide and create the configuration I want to. So I give a name to this configuration. Afterwards, I can export them, duplicate or remove. When I create a new one, I will give it a specific name for the hotspot that it will be typically on, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I can precise which language I want it to, uh, the time. And I can also, for specific tools, define myself the administrator account and password that I want to set up. This is easier, so at least each time I remember my password. Uh, and once it's done, I can define my branding. So I will select the logo I want to. Uh, and then I will select the content. So when I select the content, at the top you can see it gives me the size of the archive I'm creating. So in this case, I chose Wikifundi, which is five gigabytes. Those are specific content, and below there are static content. And all the static content may include the choice of Wikipedia in Turkish, of a wiki uh, source in German, and so on. And once you have selected all those things, you will create um, a command, a request. You will publish it. Once it's published, you wait, because yeah, when, when the archive is about 100 gigabytes, it's not just like this. So you wait maybe for one or two hours. On, week, uh, on Kiwix side, there will be an archive that is generated. And when it's ready, you receive a, e a link, an email. So this is an example of all the things that you can find in day, such as a day trip to Antarctica. Once you receive the, the thing, you receive just an email link. And the email link is, uh, is proposed for you to download the content. So you do it only when you have the time, typically. If you're in Tanzania, you go to your university first so that you don't pay the data and it's working. You download your archive, and once you have the archive, you can duplicate it as many times as you want on SD card, right? So you only have to download it 
once. Or you can ask someone to send you an SD card which is already prepared. But this, this card shop system allows you to pick up regularly exactly the version you want, the content you want, and to get it a new version of it, updated. Is that clear? And of course, when I create one, I can send them to others who do not have an account. It's, an, it's a download link that must probably work for a week or something like that. So, so this is how the, car, work, the card shop is working. And I, when I go there, uh, just a summary of who uses Kiwix according to Kiwix. Uh, currently, in 2022, they estimated about 4 million people were using it across the, the different platform they propose. And as you see, it's mostly in the global south. On their website, they have some ideas of uh, different type of views. So in the United States, they have an initiative around prisoners. Uh, in Cuba, there's um, stuff on, on servers, as far as I know. Uh, in Africa, it's my project uh, with Orange, with the schools. And in India, they also have uh, some project, in particular using Wikimed. I don't know if you are related to those ones. Uh, yes, uh, Probably. We know about them, but I'm, I'm not part of this. Yeah. So they, they have uh, several stories on, on their website, and I invite you to have a look at, the, at those. So that's mostly Kiwix. Uh, it's a separate organization which is partly funded by Wikimedia Foundation, but not only. And probably they need more funding so that they can go further. Uh, very quickly, uh, without going into very much detail, why did we decide to set up the other tool, which is called Wikifundi? You have here some leaflet, English, French, and Spanish, if you're interested to have a look. One side is very general, and the other side is typically the use for teachers. So we, de we developed it for one specific reason. It is that <laughs> Kiwix is great, we, we use it, but it's only conception. The kids in school, they have the content, they can use it for their teaching, for the learning, but if they want to produce something, they, have not, they do not have any situation. So I'm not going to give it because of time, but there's a small um, setup of hardware video, which is essentially how to plug that things in, very simple. But mostly there is a demo about how it is inside. It is based on the MediaWiki, that's a sort of private media wiki that you set up on the server. And then you can edit from it directly. Whilst I speak, I can show you the first, the first elements of it. So why did we decide to do that? Essentially because we wanted the kids to not be only cons consumers. And in our project, so here, if I skip this thing, yes, it works. To access it, we simply have to start the server here, and then we access wikifundi.hotspot, and it will launch an interface, and as you will see, once it's launched, here I'm not connected anymore to the internet. In this case, there is only one thing, which is the tool, but it could have plenty of resources from Kiwix here, and when I click on it, uh, it's available in English, French, and Spanish hence the three. Uh, the interface in here is like this. So we used MediaWiki, which we simplified. For example, the kids create the article directly from the first page. They do not have to wander around to wonder where, where it might be. So they enter the articles there. They, can, they have to log in because there's no IP address when we are not online. Huh? So we have to create an account and they simply can create stuff within their schools. But in our project, there's no synchronization system. So there is a moment where people need to be online so that they can grab the content created and put it online. So there's this, this thing is always missing. But it's better than nothing. And uh, before we, we do the, the last piece, I wanted to briefly mention the project we do with that. So that's the Wiki, uh, the Wiki Challenge project. It runs in 10 schools every year, about, um, I'm not even ex exactly sure, but probably 500 schools per year. Contribute about 100 to 200 articles every year with some pictures. 
either using Wikifundi or not using it, but using the, the tablets which are provided by Orange and using this type of little boxes. And facilitators go to their schools, teach them digital skills. They teach them how to use these, plat these tools that they don't have otherwise. They create articles about the topics around them, maybe a lake, maybe a museum, or um, the school's, uh, school's uh, stories about their villages, for example. And then they give it to the facilitators. The facilitators give it to us. We publish it on Wikidia. That's a circle that lasts about six, six months. And the following year, their content, their offline content in their school is updated. So that means an article they wrote maybe in 2022 will be only available in their school one year later at best, at best. So that's a big, big difference with our, the online project in schools where the kids are directly editing Wikipedia, maybe in the draft space, but it's very quick. In our case, we have a circle of production publication, which is about one full year. It's a big difference. Uh, and last, I would like you to take a little bit of time to think about the main challenges that we meet with offline. Again, the main challenges, thinking of tech, thinking of people, thinking of content, and thinking of project initiative, education initiative. Does anyone, is anyone able, and maybe you can start because you actually Use that. What do you think are the main challenges? We already mentioned quite a few. Yes, I think the like reaching to people. Like, if there is something available, we have a choice available, like Kiwix or like Wikipedia Zero. How can have we have a platform that tell everybody who's like? It's available. It's available. Yes, the fir this is the first thing. Second thing I can think of is that uh, we need always to like. Um, have some alternatives. Like for example, we talk, we talk about the uh, censorship, we talk about electricity, we talk about this. Uh, this raises the, the importance of funding. Like funding is a challenge. Like if, if you want to fund, to, to promote something offline, you need some amount of funding. So that's how I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah the cost is a big one. Mo most of these initiatives, organizing an editor in a school, you need to go there, you spend time, maybe you pay your bus, but that's it. Here, uh, <laughs> it's a different story. What are the other challenges? Uh, in which language you can do that? In? That's a big second big one, definitely. Uh, in particular, in the content part, as I said, lots in English. But if I want to do something in Igbo, uh, I don't have much in Igbo, much in uh, all the, the African languages. It's Swahili and all those. It's, it's uh, not Swahili, it's not much. Okay, language. What else is, might be an issue? Um, actually, during your presentation, I was thinking of, um, even if we used QX, um, did we really succeed in getting rid of our need to internet? Yani, we, need the, we still need the internet to update the versions of Wikipedia. We still need the internet to like, um, update the versions according to students or participants' um, contributions that they made offline. Um, this, is a very, this is a very big problem and challenge. And I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, for a solution about this, but I couldn't find. We still need the internet. This is you know, the sad fact. Um, even if we use KVX, we still need the internet in order to get the most up-to-date versions in order to update uh, the encyclopedia according to the students' contributions, yeah. Absolutely, we go to a school, we, we give them this system, and then if nobody goes there, then after a while they have a three years old stuff. Yeah, that's a big one, update. I mean, uh, yeah, we need to update every data and it should be synchronized with the real time, I mean real life, you know, because yeah, they're gonna be on offline reader, but Anyway, in some point, they should be update themselves also. On the other hand, the other challenge is how we, how we provide to Kivix sustainability. Because if Kivix is gone, the week of funding is gone. We hold, we, actually, we have to also keep alive the Kivix also. And we have to 
some another I don't know side project of I mean side projects like Kiwix, you know, we have to imp I mean we have to back up of the you know technology, but we don't have. I I can see that in this in this picture there is no backup yet. The, the Kiwix software, the code is open source, so yeah. backup. Uh, there were the first few years. There were several initiatives. I remember the first one was called. Uh, it was a notion of a uh, uh, Moulin, Moulin Wiki. It was in Mali, and that's from there that things went on. But yeah, there's the question of sustainability. And when we talk about update, it's update in two side, on two ways. It's the update from what is online. How do we give them the update? But when they create something, how do we put it online? So it's both direction. Another thought? But what is a challenge maybe on the, I don't know, on the, well, on the initiative side? Why aren't there so more initiative than the Kiwix ambassador is just a bunch of countries, right? And Wiki Challenge is in 10 countries. I tried to launch it in English or to more countries. I didn't get the funding, so it's not done. Right, but why? I think the initiative side like, is weak because of the awareness. Like, the, we have less about awareness about this problem. We, it is not uh, enough addressed in, in media, in, uh, in, even in Wikimedia movement. Because like, um, you, co you go to every conference, but how we like, focus on this, those people? Uh, we, we must have statistics. Uh, there must be like, allocation of resources from the foundation to support these. Kiwix is not a foundation, you know, uh, project. It's it's partly it's partly like um, contribution, but it's not it's not part of the foundation. That's why uh, not pe not so much people know about this. Which maybe which yes. may be okay. I think Kiwix is doing a lot of work to try to promote. But I can tell you, when I tried to promote Wikifundi, it was very complicated. How do you do it to talk about it to the right people? It's not so right. simple. Right. And you mentioned something else: statistics. Yes. How on earth can you provide statistics about how much your tool is being used when there is no access to internet, right? How do you collect this data? I, I don't even know how Kiwix is doing. Uh, a last thought that another challenge we might have missed? Our modern life is a challenge because if you are used to use internet, you will not feel the problem. For example, um, we fast at Ramadan. For example, if like you, if we don't not fast, we will not feel like we were poor, poor, poor people who don't have food. For example, just for example, uh, when you use internet in a daily basis and you have enough of internet, you will not like imagine how is the world without internet. How is it to be offline? Some people like imagine this in wars and in different situations. So I think this is a challenge as well. Getting used to internet. I, I don't know about you, but yesterday afternoon, yeah, I know it's one minute. When I was yesterday in Serbia, visiting the city, and I had no internet, I was just with my red, my blue bubble, trying to find my way. Just that half an hour was tough. You have a, you have a comment over there? You just joined. I don't know. So let me just conclude. I yeah, I tried to list it what I could think of, and maybe I forgot. Cost of the devices. This is not cheap, guys. In particular, it since the war and even before the COVID, the cost of elements that get in there, the price of this doubled. So yeah, it's also equipment for the people. It's complicated. Software update, we mentioned it. Limited start. Tech skills, locally, try to get to a school and deliver them that, and they never use tech stuff. The teachers, they freak out. So you need to make sure that in the schools, there's somebody aware enough to use this type of tools. Um, the here, when we talk about the user group, one of the problem is that we are actually from every country on earth. It's not like a user group in Serbia. People can meet and have beers and everything. Here we are across the world, so we cannot really meet one another. We're not numerous either. And the last kilometer is the worst part, getting to the schools. It's not an easy one. Even for somebody living in, in, I don't know, Benin, he wants to go to the school to the north, it's six hours on a motorcycle. It's not simple. Um, here, we mention it, up-to-date content, limited content in local languages, but also if content is produced locally, how do we check, ver how do we check content, verify it? And also, 
how to deal with copy views. Remember, when we are on Wikipedia and we notice a copy view, what do we do? We delete and we hide the history. Simple. But imagine if the content copyrighted left in an archive with Kiwix, it's gone, it's displayed, you have no means to retrieve it. It's there, so you cannot respect any rights on this. And last point, initiative, yeah, funding and partners. Funding, but also partners because of the last kilometers. You can, we cannot do that by ourselves. We need partners locally. Uh, local Wikimedians required. I can imagine any project in, a, in Madagascar. If I have no Wikimedian in Madagascar, then I can't run the project. Simple as that. But also lack of confidence of sk and skills of the local teachers. They are scared by this material. You offer them, often they put it in a, you know, in a drawer and they don't use it. Because they feel they might get ridiculous in front of the, te of the children. And uh, yeah, how do we turn online production, offline production online? So those are some of the challenges. Uh, and I think you identify most of them. I mostly insist about the copyright and certification because this showed up a couple of times, so that's one. And uh, with that, I think I'm, I'm done. Yeah, last thought. Um, two years ago, I gave a talk at Open Education Global. It was online, of course, at that time. I couldn't go there. Uh, and so I registered, I recorded a, a presentation which I posted on YouTube which deals with this offline topic, talking also about the history, about Wikipedia Zero and other initiatives, or LPC is mentioned as well. So if you want to look at it, I will post it on the, on the meta page and you can have a look at it afterwards quietly. Okay? And keep in touch if you're interested. Use a group. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Florence. This was very eye-opening, at least for me. It was really amazing. Uh, now this is it for the day for the forum room, but we can go to Atrium Hall in a minute to wrap up the day. So let's have a nice time in Atrium. Thank you. Thank you.